Hello, and welcome back to the Great Aspirations ACT Prep series. In this video, we will look at test-taking strategies for the English section. First, we will get into the format of the section, and then we will discuss the types of questions that you might find on it. But before we begin, I'd like to make a note of one thing. The rules and standards for the English language, as the ACT presents them, are just that, and nothing more. They're the rules as far as the ACT is concerned. In reality, nobody follows all of these rules in everyday use, and that's okay. The English section wants to measure whether you can understand and apply formal, academic English rules. It isn't concerned with your everyday use of English. So, the format of the English section. 75 questions in 45 minutes. It's a fast test. That comes out to around 36 seconds per question, which is the least time per question of any of the sections on the ACT. And these 75 questions are divided into five passages. Even though you have the least time per question of any section, I don't think that the English section has to be the most rushed section. Sure, it has one more passage than the reading section, but the passages are significantly shorter, about one-third of the length of the reading section passages. To add to that, most of the questions are short and very easy to understand, so you don't have to spend any time figuring out the questions themselves. And there are no questions that ask you to scan the entire passage for a detail or a data point. You get to spend all of your time working toward the answers. So the time situation on the English section, despite what you might think, shouldn't be a big issue. As to the question types, I would divide them roughly into three categories. Simple replacement questions, complex replacement questions, and global editing. Simple replacement questions are easy to spot, and they make up the huge majority of questions on the English section. As many as two-thirds of all the questions in the section and the reason why they are so easy to spot is that they actually aren't questions in the formal sense. There will not be any question or prompt associated with simple replacement questions. Instead, there will be an underlined portion of the passage with a number, and you will have to choose between not changing the underlined portion or replacing the underlined portion with three possible replacements. Take this question, for example. The dogs were frolicking and playing in the field. And the portion that we are replacing is dogs. Our answer choices are A, no change, B, dog, C, dogs, with an apostrophe between the G and the S, or D, dogs, with an apostrophe at the end of the word. In this example, we are asked to choose between leaving the sentence as it is or substituting one of the options below. I hope that this is easy enough for all of you. Answer choices C and D can't be right, because there is no possession in the sentence. We do not know that the dogs have anything, so we can't use an apostrophe here. And answer choice B can't be right, because the sentence only works if it is about plural dogs. In formal written English, it's not grammatical to say the dog were frolicking and playing in the field. So, we choose answer choice A, the dogs were frolicking and playing in the field. But the larger point here is that these questions are fast. 
there's nothing extra to read, and if you are sure that a grammar question like this follows the rules of formal written English, you don't even need to think about the other answer choices. You can almost instinctively answer, in this case, no change. Sometimes simple replacement questions ask about things other than grammar. They can ask about a simple edit. These are slightly more difficult because they don't follow a strict set of rules, but they are still relatively straightforward and shouldn't take too much of your time. The exact details of that are for another time, and I will go over everything that you might see as a simple replacement question in my simple replacement video. Complex replacement questions are still replacement questions. They offer three possible replacements for some part of the passage, but they give you some guidance about how to answer the question. Take this as an example. Of the thousands who apply, very few are allowed to compete in this prestigious competition. And the question is, given that all of the answer choices are accurate, which of the following most precisely indicates how many applicants are admitted to the competition? With answer choices A, no change, B, less than half, C, only those with prodigious talent, or D, only 12. This question will certainly take longer to understand than a simple replacement question, but it still won't take very long at all. We can easily see that the most precise answer choice of these options is D, only 12. Answer choice C doesn't tell us anything about the number of applicants that are admitted, and answer choice B is less precise than answer choice D. But suppose that the question were written differently. Suppose instead that the question asked, suppose the writer wants to emphasize the talent of the competitors. Which choice most effectively accomplishes this goal? Given the same answer choices to a different question, we can see that answer choice C must be the correct answer, because it is the only one that makes any comment about the talent of the competitors. So complex replacement questions are somewhat more difficult than simple replacement questions, but they aren't anything extreme. The final type of question that you might find on the English section are global editing questions. These are much more complicated, and they ask about the passage as a whole. If we consider the following question, the writer is considering whether to add the following sentence to the passage. The competition is considered one of the most difficult in the world. This sentence would most logically be placed at A, point A in paragraph 1, B, point B in paragraph 2, C, point C in paragraph 2, or D, point D in paragraph 3. These questions just take time. The other questions are fast and only require that you understand, at most, the sentence that the question is about. But global editing questions are about understanding the entire passage and considering how the author could best convey a certain meaning or meet a certain goal. In this question, you need to understand the contexts of each point, A through D, and then compare them, and your understanding needs to be much deeper than with simple replacement questions. You need to understand tone, style, or organization, 
and how the added sentence would affect those, which is a much higher level of thinking than applying rules of grammar and mechanics. This brings us to the strategy of the English section. In my view, global editing questions are hardly worth it unless you are a very fast test taker or you are aiming for a score above 30 on the English section. They can easily take 10 times longer than a simple replacement question, even though they're worth the same points. In other words, global editing questions could take half of your testing time on the English section. And for most people, this time is better spent working on faster questions. And what's even better is that this sort of test-taking strategy won't show up on the score report that colleges see. What I call global editing questions are not a complete category on the score report on the ACT. These questions fit into a much, much larger section on your score report that includes many simple replacement questions. So there won't be any zeros on your score report just because you skipped those questions. Otherwise, you can move straight through the questions in order. Replacement questions are easiest to understand and answer as you are reading the passage, and questions will be conveniently placed right next to the part of the passage that they are about. The passages are not designed to challenge your reading comprehension, so there's no specific order in which you should read the passages. And finally, I have a study recommendation for all of you. If you study only one thing for the ACT, study English. The math section really depends on your background math abilities, and preparing for it fully would mean reviewing two and a half years of high school math. The reading and science sections are really about your ability to take in information and analyze it quickly. And this is a soft skill that you have been developing for your whole life. So aside from test-taking strategies, whether they are mine or someone else's, it really is quite difficult to improve your math, reading, or science more than a few points. There's no way to cram for those sections on the ACT. But English is different. You can dust off an old grammar book, memorize every rule for punctuation and sentence structure, and it will probably help you if you haven't already memorized all of them. Unlike the other sections, there are a few simple rules that will come up dozens of times on the English section, which I will go over in my series on replacement questions. So, to recap, the English section is where most people can make the most improvement. Replacement questions make up the bulk of the English section, and global editing questions likely aren't worth it unless you are a very fast test taker or you have a goal to score above 30 on the English section. Of course, if you have extra time at the end, you should complete as many questions as you can. So I hope this helps. As always, be sure to check out my website, greataspirationsprep.org, for worksheets on this and other topics, as well as full ACT practice sections. And see my channel for more ACT videos, especially the videos going into more depth about English questions. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care.